My name is Tim Carolyn, and this is an introductory look at the privilege account vaulting capability in the Delinear platform. So this is the landing screen for the platform, and I'm currently logged in as my Active Directory user. The Delinear platform supports identity authentication from Active Directory, Azure Active Directory, and any SAML or OIDC external provider to get your users properly authenticated within. We also support the introduction of a whole range of different multi-factor authentication types for getting your users correctly and appropriately authenticated to the platform in a secure manner. So let's go ahead and check out some of the privilege account vaulting capability within. There are two ways of getting to the tool that we're going to be looking at, Secret Server, either with the application tile here on the front screen or the application tile on the left-hand navigation panel. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is the first screen that we look at when it comes to the vaulting tool. On the left-hand side, you can see that we have the folder structure. The folder structure is the logical way in which our privileged accounts are organized within the secret server tool. The folder structure itself is completely customizable for our organization's needs. And we can do the folder structure in any structure that makes sense. So for example, we might have it done via team, we might have it done via infrastructure type, or we might have it done via regions or any combination of the above. You can specifically set the folder structure up in a way that suits your organization's needs. And then in addition to that, the folder structure is such that users require explicit permissions to the folders and the secrets within in order to get access. So in other words, a user without explicit access to the folder will not even see that it exists. This means that we can delegate authority for the folder structure to different parts of our organization. And even if a user is an otherwise full administrator of the service, they won't even know that it's there and they don't even have to deal with the folder or the privileged contents within at all. So let's take a look at some example privilege accounts. The first example privilege account we'll take a look at is a domain administrator account. So this is an Active Directory account it's a highly privileged account and something that we want to control with a great deal of specificity within the privilege account management tool. And we can see an example listed here. Number one, domain admin, hidden password. So if I click on the secret in here, you'll see the details of the secret come up in front of me. The secret name, which is arbitrarily chosen and something that's representative of the privilege account itself, the template that it's attached to, the domain that it's attached to, the username, and any associated notes that we want to keep alongside the secret. You'll note that my user here is not allowed to access the password for this particular secret. I've actually hidden it away from this user. However, the user has access to these launches down the bottom of the screen here which means they can actually use the privileges associated with this account without knowing what the actual credential is. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So if I click on this RDP launcher, it's gonna ask me for a computer name or IP address into which I want to launch. Click launch now, and that's actually going to make me become that privileged user in the target host without me ever having seen the credentials. So I have all the privileges associated with that particular account, but I don't have access directly to the fundamental credential. This means that the credential can be generated at a very high level of complexity. We don't need to worry when this user goes away from our organization, the credential is still protected. In addition, when we're doing things like the session launching, we can have the session actually recorded. So all the user's keystrokes and actions within the session can be recorded and stored for later viewing. We can either do things such as viewing a live session in progress, send messages to the administrator to tell them that they're being monitored, or perhaps if they're doing something they shouldn't be, we can advise them of this. So let's go ahead and close out this launched RDP session. 
and go and take a look at a different type of account. So that was an Active Directory account. What if we have a privilege account? That is, for example, a Linux Unix account. So these look very similar as far as the secrets are concerned. We'll go and have ahead and have a look at an example account here. This is a SSH key, which is an administrator to an Ubuntu server. And down the bottom here, you can see that we have a PuTTY launcher instead. So for Windows accounts, generally we're doing RDP launching. For Linux, Unix, we're doing PuTTY via SSH. If we click on the launcher, once again, we'll be taken into the privilege session in the host with the credential and become the credential without ever knowing what the credential is. So the credential can be rotated at a very high level of complexity. We don't need to worry about the users ever taking the credential away from our organization. I'll point out at this stage that every action within the service has an associated event audit. These are all found in the secrets specifically under the audit trail. And you can see that there's a username with an associated action an associated ticket number. Let's say, for example, we wanted to integrate secret server with service now. We could require a ticket number to be added in order for the user to do their spe specified action on the service. So we have a number of example actions in here with the associated user. We can actually export all of these audits from a specific secret into an audit report and store them for further auditing or viewing. In addition to this, we also have specific reports that we can pull out from the service, which are both customizable and also functional to the extent that we can use them to get access to any of the sort of information that we require from the service. So for example, if we wanna see which user has access to which secret, we can run a report therefore, you can see that there are filters that we can add in here. Click on run report, that will generate the report, once again, this is also downloadable as a CSV. We can email the report out to a set group of users, or we can schedule the report to be run on a regular basis and sent to a group of administrators. Let's take a look at some of the workflows that we can add to secrets within Secret Server. The first of these workflows is the checkout workflow. The checkout workflow means that only a single user at a point in time has access to a specific secret. In other words, when I click on this account, it's going to ask me if I want to check this secret out. I click on checkout, and for the time that I have access to this credential, it is only my user and no other user that is allowed to get access to this particular privilege credential. Now, in this case, you can see that I do actually have a visible password field so if required, users can, or if required and allowed, users can both display credentials and also copy credentials out of the service for the allotted time period. When we look at the remote password changing tab, we can see that we can change the credential for this account, either using the credentials itself, or we can use an additional privilege account credential to change the password on its behalf. And then we can also change the password on a schedule, or we can change the password when the credential is actually checked back into the pool, whichever makes sense for our organization in the context of a specific secret. Once I check this credential in, the password is now changed and I no longer have access to the account as well. In addition to the checkout workflow, we can do approval requests. So this is where a user does not have pre-authorized access to a particular secret, and they must request access there too. This will give them the ability to specify a time frame in which they need the account, i.e. the duration. We might ask them to provide a valid ticket number, for example, for ServiceNow, BMC Remedy, Jira, or others in order to make the request. And then they provide a reason for requests as well. Once they submit this request, a group of authorizers will receive an email and they'll be able to approve or deny the request or change the specifics of the request itself and the corresponding access. We can also do a multi-stage workflow as well, where multiple groups are given staged approval 
where the approval request must traverse through the stages in order to eventually reach the point at which the user gains access. In addition, and finally, we can also simply require the user to enter their ticket in order to get access without going through the full approval process. And we trust that ServiceNow has provided the appropriate approvals in order to allow the user to get access to the privilege account. I hope you've enjoyed this basic overview of privilege account vaulting through the Delinear platform with the tooling within Secret Server. Thank you so much for joining the session, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon. Thank <laughs> you.